I am not very good at Smash Bros. Despite having thousands of hours in both Melee and Ultimate, when I go to a tournament, the expectation is that I will go 0 2. My win rate sits at 41%, meaning I am much more likely to lose than win when I sit down at a setup. But what if I could change that? If I truly put in all the time and effort, could I get good at this game? Well, today we're going to put that theory to the test. For one month, I'm going to be grinding methodically and religiously to see how far discipline practice can take you. All of this is going to culminate in the PNW Arcadian at the end of the month where we can see if I can outperform my seed. So let's start. The first thing we have to consider is how to actually practice. If my years of competitive FPS games have taught me anything, it's that you can play a game for eight hours a day and actually get worse. Watch this. <laughs> but how? Well, let's talk about autopilot and bad habits. If you are not thinking while you are playing or letting your system 2 take full control, then the bad habits you do will just continue to become more ingrained in your play. Practice doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. So what does methodical practice actually look like? For one, I need to be thinking hard, even during friendlies, about what I am doing. Why am I getting hit? Where am I struggling in a match? It's really easy to get frustrated and let the anger edge its way in, pushing out the reasonable decision making in the process. So I took notes, aiming for at least one a game on what I can improve on for the next game. What I've been finding is I often take the same note multiple times. For example, I have written here five times in one day, move with purpose. This is because I have ADHD and I play like someone who has ADHD. Stand still you moron, you keep getting hit because of it. I've also been trying to split my time into five distinct areas. Training room, Wi-Fi, friendlies, studying, and tournaments. My training regimen is for movement and combos so that when I'm in tournament and things are crucial, I'm not gonna mess up. We've all been there. Missing a kill confirmed that would have won us a set if we had only practiced just a little bit more. Wi-Fi is the most tempting to do because it's the easiest to do from home, but it's also just an absolute cesspool. Playing in a laggy environment against mostly zoners isn't good for practice or my mental health. Friendlies are where I find the most benefit because if I'm thinking about what I'm doing wrong and I'm in an offline environment against good players, I can instantly make those changes. Studying consists of Metafy, coaching, and VOD reviewing and was easily the hardest thing to force myself to do. Watching yourself play Smash is like hearing your voice in a video, except sometimes your voice breaks at the worst times and then you have a coach that tells you, hey, don't let your voice break. And you're like, I know I shouldn't let my voice break. The metaphor is falling apart, you get what I'm saying. Finally, there's the actual tournaments. Rarely do I find myself improving at the actual tournament, but instead view tournaments as a representation of how my work is paying off and of course to get more videos to review. I will be tracking all five of these categories as well as all the money and time spent total uh, to see how that correlates to my improvement and because I'm a psycho. Going into this challenge, it was important for me to identify what weaknesses I have as a player and set goals that I can work towards. What I struggle with most is not playing one character. You can ask a room full of people who I main and each one of them would give you a different answer. So for this challenge, I wanted to commit myself to playing mostly one character and I wanted it to be a character I have not played before. That way progress felt more authentic and less like I was just de-rusting. I chose Rob because if I chose Steve or Kazia, people would question the validity of my results. And just like that, we're off. The most fun I had during this challenge was becoming more comfortable with Rob zero to death combos. I just sit there, head empty, pressing the buttons to make my opponent die stupid early. It was pure bliss. When it came time to my first tournament, I did not feel comfortable playing Rob yet, so I chose Incineroar because that is a character that needs no labbing whatsoever. To my surprise, I actually got fifth going four and two. However, my ugly tendencies were showing. This is not a man that is having fun with the game. The head shakes and emotions were front and center and it caused some really ass gameplay as a result. Following my first week of playing, I bought a Metafy subscription. Now, you would think because this is a month long video, I would buy a month long subscription to Metafy. I bought the year one because I guess I just hate money. I started watching Rob Deconstructed and implementing that in friendlies and training room. I will say, while it is extremely helpful in some areas, there's a segment in it where Lucrecio tells you all about the advanced techniques with the character. And I fell into that trap. I spent way too much time learning advanced techniques that I seriously did not use a single time in tournament. This week I also began playing Wi-Fi for the first time ever, so I bought a Switch and modded it to reduce latency. So there's $150 gone as well. After many days of grinding, I still felt pretty unsure about my Rob, so I played Wolf and Palutena at the next tournament. 
which means I clearly did not learn from the goals that I set out at the beginning of the video. Here again, I did fine. I lost to Raffbox and RJW, who are both very respectable losses, and I did so with a little bit more grace. For the most part, there were no noticeable improvements after my first week of gameplay. And just like that, Christmas break had come along, and so I put a pause on this challenge until I came back from vacation, because I'm not going to be the lunatic that brings Smash Bros to Cancun. This time. My box wouldn't fit in my carry-on. Immediately after my vacation, and I mean 12 hours after I landed, was a regional. Again, having not actually played Rob at all during the hiatus, I had trusted my wolf and the Palutena to do the heavy lifting. I won my round one pretty handedly, but then I faced Kloon. Kloon is pretty damn good and he'll end up being seeded third at the Arcadian, so it's a tough opponent to run into. Game one starts off incredibly rough as I don't notice myself lose my jump and die 10 seconds into the game. Normally, this would tilt me extremely hard, but I actually even up the stocks after only taking 51%. The game is extremely back and forth, but I lose to a dash attack. Game two was also decently close, but Kloon remained on top and I was sent to losers, where I would face my most challenging opponent so far, staying calm against Steve. Steve is absolute nonsense and a miserable character to be fighting. But you can't be thinking about that mid set or you're gonna crumble. It was long, it was grueling, and yes, it was bullshit, but we did take out Steven Minecraft and move on to play Conga. Oof. Conga is an opponent I had studied before we played, but honestly, you'd never be able to tell from that set. Okay, so EGR was not a big success for me, but losing to Kanga and Kloon could be a whole lot worse. The next week, I upped the amount of tournaments I went to, fully committed to playing Rob, and got coaching from Epic Gabriel. The tournaments went about as expected, losing to Embozy's secondaries and Avenue, but taking a game off each of them. The coaching from Gabe ended up being pretty valuable going into Smash to Pieces, as I had an intense set with Ryan, a PR snake player. My neutral game was pretty solid, but I just couldn't quite close out stocks with a fake kill screen robbing me game one and a tragic SD robbing me game two. I went on to lose to LJ, who's a Toon Link player, and this was easily one of the worst mental performances I've ever had. Playing against zoners is aggravating enough. Playing while tilted from your last loss is just a mistake. So we have another tournament where I went two and two. We've now reached the final week of this challenge and I've only really improved marginally. So I felt like it was time to up my game. I paid JDV to coach me, I went to more tournaments, and I grinded non-stop. The JDV coaching helped me mentally a lot, although sometimes his advice came off a little like... Who cares how silly, pink, and fleshy you look? How non-threatening, limp, and soggy you are? <laughs> <laughs> However, the tournaments this week were not really going well for me. I showed up to Octagon just to play in the redemption bracket after work, and I got second, getting double eliminated by Raffbox again. However, there is clear improvement here. These sets were incredibly doable and not just the instant losses that they were before. Right before the Arcadian though, I got my worst tournament result yet, getting seventh out of 12 people. This tournament result was especially painful because this last week has been absolutely miserable. So, the Arcadian is tomorrow. I am so exhausted. I have put so much time and effort into this. I think I've tracked it. Um, I've put 80 plus hours into training here uh, for this event, which uh, is a lot. That's, that's a good amount. My days consist of waking up, going to work, getting home from work and playing Smash Bros until eventually I go to sleep and I repeat the same thing tomorrow. I have had multiple coaching sessions. I've gone to many tournaments. I have done so many friendlies, so much practice, and I still don't feel ready at all. I'm just really nervous, man. It It's really hard to put yourself out there and, and try at something, and oftentimes I just won't because I'm afraid I'm gonna fail. This is when I knew I had to hire the big guns. Going into the Arcadian, I really want to hit top 32. So I reached out to the one person I know can help get me there. He's gonna hate that I talk about this, but I have to talk about this. If you watch Port Priority 7 in 2022, there was an upset that happened in pools that hit an insane upset factor of six. 
and I knew it was gonna happen a week before it did. Clue beat Dark Wizzy, and people were quick to blame Kazuya. With respect to my boy Clue, he was missing a lot of electrics. He was not doing the Kazuya stuff that normally people are complaining about. He did not win purely off Kazuya nonsense. He studied up on Dark Wizzy and brought that to the stage. Clue is one of the best minds in Smash and has helped a lot of people here in the PNW before. So yeah, I hit him up for my silly little YouTube video. Clue has helped me think about this game in a completely different way. I do think it's gonna make a difference tomorrow, but I guess we'll see. Day of the Arcadian has finally come and all I have to do now is wear my best attire. And I think I have just the thing. No. 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 Our round one was Akazia, and both JDV and Clue had helped him before and were not necessarily on my side for this one. So the pressure was on. Akazia, like Steve, is a character that has a whole lot of nonsense, so I just have to stay cool, calm, and collected, and I'll win. Which I absolutely f***ing nailed. This is some of the best Smash Bros I have ever played. I stuck to my game plan, I adjusted on the fly, and this is one of the most satisfying dubs I have ever had. My round two, on the other hand, was a little rougher. Sweepy is a very talented Rob from Southern Washington, and I did not under any circumstances want to Rob ditto him. So I picked Game & Watch, a choice that Sweepy agreed with. Game one did not go well for me. Game & Watch might win this matchup, but I don't. Lots of mistakes and unfamiliarity hurt me here, but this was mostly just a player diff. Normally losing game one so badly would really hurt my mental, but it actually felt kind of freeing. I went into game two feeling more confident that I had nothing to lose anymore. I made some adjustments and this game was going much better for me. In the end, hubris was my downfall as I forgot Game & Watch does actually have a weakness. Losers, I was playing pretty confident. I beat someone who was playing in their first tournament ever, sorry May. Then I had to fight a Joker player and things got admittedly hairy as I actually lost game one but I trusted the process and I did end up taking the set 2-1. At this point, I've actually done it. I have outplaced my seed and I have proven that I have improved. I have nothing else to prove at this point, so why do I hear boss music? Oh dear God, my next opponent is Flame Master. Flame Master is a fellow box user, but his ass plays Terry, making him infinitely more terrifying. All this to say is I felt scared to play Rob against him, so I chose Game & Watch, which felt safer. I did not trust the process and as a result, So I am out of the bracket now. I got 33rd, which is better than I was seated to do. I think I played pretty well, but yeah, it feels I didn't I didn't do as well as I as I hoped to today. And um that's okay. Let's take a final look at our results. Before this tournament, I had a 41% win rate. During this period, however, I had a 55% win rate, bringing my overall win rate up to 42%. Buddy, you're just a cheap fucking knockoff. Oh no, no, no. I'm the upgrade. And all it took was 80 plus hours of grinding, 200 plus dollars, and a miserable week. Let's talk about that miserable week, actually. I use a daily emotion tracker. I know, get a load of this guy. Loves tracking things. But this is what an average month looks like for me. And here's the week I spent grinding. To me, this just isn't worth it. I love Smash Bros, but my life was pretty happy just going to tournaments and seeing my favorite people. While I may be a better player now because of all the practice and grinding, it's just not worth the sacrifice. Commentary is much closer to my calling anyway. If you want to improve at Smash, do it, you can. Be methodical with your practice, get good sleep, take good notes, and for the love of God, don't grind Elite Smash. Don't expect to go from an Owen tour to a PR player in one month, six months, even a year, but you will improve. I'm glad I did this challenge to prove that I haven't hit my skill ceiling and it's given me a new perspective on the game, but I won't be doing it any further. However, if this video does well, maybe I'll do this challenge with another game. Who knows? You'll just have to subscribe and find out. Speaking of which, my viewers are unsurprisingly 99% male, but did you also know that 99% of you are unsubscribed? Fellas, help me out a bit here. And also, please don't let my girlfriend be my only female subscriber, please.